join me in welcoming Moritz to the stage. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, I mean, it's, it's always enjoyable being at, at an event like this, second day. A few chairs are missing over there. Um, one or two are free. Um, so I really am thankful for everyone still being here. Um, Guestigon. My name is Moritz van Grotus. I'm CEO and late founder of Guestigon. We're a software company. What we do is we take depth data, track human presence in the depth data, and provide that as an API to the developers um, in the most flexible manner. Um, tracking human means we can detect poses, we can detect biometrics, we can detect motions, we can detect behavior, um, we can detect gestures and provide that in the most natural manner. Our idea as a middleware company is that the way we interact with other humans the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we move, where we look, how we behave is essential to interact with any kind of surrounding machines, IT, as well as AR and VR. Um, why does it really matter? Why does it really matter? Um, if I see my kids using Oculus Rift, they grab out to objects. They, if they get scared on the roller coaster, my youngest daughter, she, well, she was using the roller coaster and she really enjoyed it. But at some point, she got scared. So what does a young girl of, I think, six at that time do when she gets scared? She closed her hands in front of her face. And that was a moment when she screamed because she was expecting to close herself off, to blind out the, I don't know, the dinosaurs or the jumping which she was doing on the roller coaster. Um, she was using her hands in a natural way. And I think that is something we need to come to in AR as well as in VR. And frankly speaking, I think no one doubts that. We need our hands in VR. I always, I always love Samsung. Um, they make great advertisements. I think if anyone has seen these 100 years of Samsung advertisements something like three or four months ago on, on TV, um, last pictures, Gear VR, and a guy was grabbing something. He couldn't because they don't have a hands in VR. Um, if I see that kind of advertisement, the guy is grabbing something. Um, so they anticipating we will have our hands in, in VR, um, but they're not yet there. Um, I didn't talk about him. I think we've all been triggered by Minority Report quite some time ago. Um, but even looking at augmented reality, um, it even gets more important to get the hands into the field of view. Because what do we want to do in augmented reality? In the end, we want to do everything that we know from the real world as well as the virtual world in AR, probably also in VR. We want to interact. We want to grab objects, we want to throw objects, we might want to murph objects, um, we want, might want to pat a dinosaur on the nose, we might, might want to punch the dinosaur on the nose, we might want to carry really heavy guns and kill hundreds of dinosaurs with those. We want to do everything, but we need our hands for that. So how do you control these things? Um, there are controllers out there. And frankly speaking, um, I'm, I'm, as a CEO of a company doing gesture control, I'm always disappointing having to say they are really good. Um, it's fun playing with them. They are very, very responsive. They feel pretty natural how you interact with them. Um, they provide a good gaming experience. Um, sometimes they start getting weirdish. Um, if they get too, too much as a single-use wearable. Um, but they're good. Nevertheless, these controllers aren't really natural. Um, if I want to grab something, I don't have some plastic thing in my hands and turn that and then trigger grabbing something. That's not the way 
I act. That's not the way I speak. That's not the way I interact with objects. Um, so I, I don't think, I think they're good. I think especially anyone who's very much into gaming will easily learn how to use them. If I think about my parents, never ever. Um, and I still hope that my parents at some point in time will start using VR, but they won't, they won't start learning these things. And even for me, I've never been a hardcore gamer, but I always lose against my kids on, on the PlayStation or whatsoever. Um, they play like this, and I play like that. So how do I do that in VR? Um, I don't see my hands. I don't use, see the game controller. So I don't think it's always it's natural. They're not always on. They need power. They need battery life. Um, they're bulky. So if I think about a point of sales, if I think about traveling, um, if you think about taking VR to a plane, um, will you unpack your Gear VR or Oculus or Glyph or whatsoever and then unpack in the plane to game controllers add-on? Not sure about that. Um, they're big and they're bulky and um, I think a great thing for gaming in the living room, but I think hard to use everywhere else. Um, and that's, that's where we come in. Um, our core vision here is, is to bring the hands into AR and VR, interact with it. Um, we have a lot of experience doing so. If you've down at the show, um, you can demo it, you can experience an Oculus as well as on a Gear VR, uh, on a cardboard. Um, that's what we do. Um, but I'm talking here about key learnings. Um, what do we need to get hands into VR? Um, first of all, we believe you need depth data. Why depth data? You can also use RGB. You can use even enhanced infrared enhanced RGB. But with any RGB, you have a hard time cutting away what is happening behind. So if I would be acting here with my hands, how do I f f really steadily cut away what you are doing over there? How do you just get your hands in and not the scene around you? Because if I'm in a dinosaur world, I don't want to see my coworkers there, except if they're a Tyrannosaurus Rex, which sometimes I imagine it could be. Um, I just want to see my hands. So we do believe using depth data where you can cut away distances and you simply can track up arm's length is core to provide a good experience. Um, the next thing is if you then have the data available, how do you visualize it? Um, you can do a lot with avatars. Avatars have a huge advantage that they don't break, that they always know where all units are where all nodes are um, and you can use your smallest finger even if you don't see them in the depth data um, but it doesn't feel like your hand um, if you've seen these flying hands around in a scene as we as I, well if you use some some of the controller based solutions um, you see a cut off hand avatar hand flying around in the kitchen or in the game it feels for me a bit of Harry Potter-ish if you have these flying hands doing things but not connected to the scene. Um, so I think Avatar is a bit too weird. Um, then we've seen quite a number of solutions that use RGB um, vision of the hand. That's a middle proposal, um, which is quite good. It looks like your hand. You see your rings, you see your watches, you see a sleeve. Um, if you're lacking a finger or you have very long or very short fingers, you see that. Um, the challenge there is just imagine you're in a VR horror environment. It's dark, it's scary. And then you enter the scene with your light hand because you're in the middle of a day, the daylight and everything is light and you get flashed by the, by the skin color. Or just the other way around, you're in the living room, it's night, um, but you're enjoying, I don't know, a stroll in the park in VR but your hand is really darkish and um, it doesn't feel good. So, so what we believe the best way doing it is provide a vision of your true hand from a, from a form and from a surface, but do something different from 
the, in the colorish version. Here we have doing and experimenting a lot with that, and I think it's going pretty well, some kind of metalish surface. Um, it's still your hand, but it's so far away from the color that you don't really care if it's something totally different. What matters most? Latency. There's no doubt about that. If I do a swipe and it doesn't happen in that millisecond, you really get a problem. So if you design these solutions, think about connections, USB versus MIPI, think about how long does um, the algorithms need to run, what kind of apps do you use, how, how well are they integrated, how fast are they running on the processors, because if I swipe and I need to wait, the user experience really sucks. Um, I was thinking about should I also, being here on stage, talk about how would you design gestures to work well in, in AR and VR? And actually, I skipped that, simply due to the reason I'm not the perf best person to do and talk about that. Um, somewhere in here, Conrad, our head of UX UI, he would be the guy talking about this. Plus, different companies, different OEMs have different views on how should we interact with AR and VR devices. And I think that they will use that to distinguish themselves for quite some time more um, to provide best possible solutions and have a competitive advantage towards others. Nevertheless, um, how do we solve it? Um, as I talked about using, uh, having latency as the key topic, um, if we want to try to bring in hands into VR, we can do that with a full hand skeleton. It works very well, it works very stable, but it's a lot of data power that we need, and data power always means latency. So if you use a full hand, that's nice, but we do believe that just following the fingertips and maybe the center of a palm should be sufficient for practically all hand interaction in AR and VR. Um, another thing is I've been talking about depth sensing. We believe that depth sensing is the core technology to get your hands into VR. Um, we as a company, we, we support something 38, 39 different depth sensors today. That is also especially important if you think about platforms. If you think about how will a Google Daydream be implemented, will it, it will be running on different devices and these different devices might have different sensors on it um, and you need to use them, all of them. You need as a developer be able to address all of them um, and we believe with our software only approach, at least what we provide as Gestigon, um, this can be supported and we we have these prototypes in the labs. Um, we often get, and I got the question downstairs quite often during the last 24 hours, um, what kind of sensor do you prefer? Frankly speaking, there's no the best sensor. Um, we see that PMD has a few design wins in, with OEMs and has a really nice Pico Flex, but we just as well see companies like Innuitive building prototypes and, and, and sensors which fit very, very well into, into the um, AR and VR world. The next thing to think about is on what kind of processor should it run. Um, if you have a cable connected solution at home, well, use your PC. You might have some interfacing issues, but use that. Um, but everything that goes mobile, any kind of HoloLens, Gear VR, cardboard, glyph, um, the entire software architecture, the entire software needs to be running on um, embedded systems. Um, that is something we've been taking care of from day one. Um, downstairs, we, we demo on a, on a Samsung S7, so not the Note, no fear. Um, and the software really runs smoothly. Um, we do see that in the future, we might have some vision-based processors on the devices. Um, the Mavidius Myriad, is one example which we, we like using um, because it has a lot of power and it can go mobile, it can go embedded. Um, one other topic where we like to boost about, where we really are strong in is, is quality management. We've learned in automotive how to cope with quality management and use it also here. So if, if we commit delivering something, um, I have to say it simply works. Um, just a few words on, on where we are today. Um, if you, if you want to 
have a look downstairs, we provide a very nice cardboard version um, where everything is in that you need. Um, it contains the interaction mode, it contains the interfaces as well as the APIs so developers can't start using on it. Um, being a company in 2016, there's no way not mentioning Pokemon. I think next year I won't show that slide anymore. I would be too much to 16. Um, using mixed reality, using RGB and adding then um, gesture control with a, a um, 3D sensor on a mobile device to it. But we just as well have built very serious production planning tools where blue color workers could support the production planning at big corporations on, on building, building lines. Um, another thing I probably won't be showing after November 8th is we got the support of Angela Merkel and this, this other guy. Um, they used our gesture control solution at the Hannover Messe and the very first virtual handshake between these two countries were, was on our software and we're really proud of that. Thank you very much. I over spent my time already. Thank you.